Hey friends, welcome. Uh, today we are going to discuss nuclear shell model and basically nuclear shell model it states that as we have electrons distributed in different shells the neutrons and the protons or we can say the nucleons are also arranged in different shells and this lays the basis of the nuclear shell model and we are again going to see the chemistry perspective of nuclear shell model so nuclear shell model was independently developed by maria gopert mayer and hans jensen in 1940s and they were awarded nobel prize in physics in 1963 for the development of nuclear shell model now when we are see shell model or when we are looking the liquid drop model then in liquid drop model nucleons in the nuclear they will they were interacting with the nearest neighbors all only like we have molecules of liquid that are interacting with the neighboring nucle nucleons but in case of shell model each nucleon interacts chiefly with the general force field which is produced by all the nucleons so in case of nuclear shell model the nucleus are under the effect of the general force which is produced by all the other nucleons so this is the basic difference between the nuclear shell model and liquid drop model now the shell model is also known as independent particle model and as i have told in this model nucleons they are assumed that they exist in the shells as we have electrons in the different cells and this nucleons they exist in quantized energy states means they exist in different energy states and there are very few collisions between nucleons and nucleons that means that uh, the nucleons they do not collide and uh, they exist in different energy states as we have electrons in different orbitals and as we know that in any particular orbital there are only two electrons one with plus half spin and one with minus half spin that means that is opposite spin so in case of nuclear shell model also it is assumed that the nucleons they exist in a potential well and as you can see in the diagram so they have shown the potential well and the oppositely or each state is occupied by one positive half spin and one negative half spin so where the pauli's exclusion principle applies and there is a difference between the allowed state of protons and the neutrons you can easily see the energy difference or the allowed state for neutrons and protons and the energy of proton is little bit higher as compared to the neutrons so basically in nuclear shell model it is assumed that the nucleons exist in a potential well and in that potential well they are distributed in different shells and depending on this shells or depending on the occupancy of this shells the stability of the nucleus can be explained when we see the binding energy very closely it is observed that most stable nuclei they have even values of neutrons now obviously they will have even because they are paired so even values are always paired and hence they will be more stable and there are only 18 nuclei having odd values of both protons and neutrons they are stable so there are only eight nuclei having odd value stable rest all the stable molecules they have even number of neutrons or protons and there is a marked difference between the binding energy per nucleon given by the semi empirical formula and the experiments and that difference uh, you can see in this particular diagram that at certain points there is a jump or there is a deviation from the semi empirical formula so there are several peaks are appearing in the graph say at 28 50 then 82 and 126 so this jumps they represent the stable or they represent the stable binding energy and as we know that atoms with electrons 2 10 18 36 54 and 86 are completely filled and they show stability or they are stable so generally as we are studying the inert gas or inert gases so they have completely filled orbitals and as a result they are most stable similarly there are several nuclei observed having numbers 2 8 
20, 28, 50, 82 and 128 protons or neutrons and this nuclei are available more abundant than other nuclei and this numbers that is 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82 and 126 are known as magic numbers okay which represents the highest stabilized nuclei and if we see the graph of average binding energy versus number of nucleons also we can see that uh, you can observe helium so it has it is deviating from the graph so it has higher uh, nu nuclear binding energy similarly you can observe oxygen also it has higher nuclear binding energy so this higher nuclear binding energy it shows that those nuclei are more stable as compared to other nuclei and this are nothing but they are they refer to the magic numbers as we were talking about the filling of the shells so uh, over here also you can see that the arrangement of the cells as in case of electrons we have 1s or s p d f orbitals similarly it is assumed that in case of the nuclear shells they are also they have s p d f orbitals and they are also arranged or they are also filled systematic way wherein s can occupy two nucleons or two neutrons or protons p can occupy six neutrons d can occupy 10 neutrons and f can occupy 14 nucleons so in this way as we can arrange electrons in the orbit similarly we can arrange the nucleons in different cells and you can see that the total two so it has it will it will be a complete octet and hence it will be more stable and there is an energy gap which stabilizes the nuclei similarly in 1p we have 4 plus 2 6 and earlier 2 so it total becomes 8 so 8 is our magic number again then 20 is our magic number 28 is our magic number 50 is our magic number so for lighter nuclei the magic numbers are 2 8 20 and for heavier nuclei we have magic number 2 8 28 50 82 and 126 now there are several experimental results observed which could explain the cell model and it is seen that nuclei with even number of protons and neutrons they are more stable because as we know that even number will have uh, pair of spin that is plus half and minus half so they will be more stable and any particular state is filled when it contains two protons or two neutrons so they will be stable if it will contain or if any particular state as you can see in this that is one one s so it, it will contain either two neutrons or two protons then it is called a complete state and similarly if there is an extra proton or neutron is added then it is it will always increase the nuclear energy or the energy of the nucleus and the increasing nuclear energy it will lead to a greater instability in the nucleus so suppose there are two neutrons okay and if we are if we want to add one more neutron then when we are adding one more neutron it will increase the nuclear energy and as a result the nucleus will become greatly instable and this nucleus has a tendency or this nucleus will lose that neutron and as a result it will come back to the stable state there are several evidences which proves the nuclear shell model and also correlates the magic numbers with the shell model and uh, uh, these are all based on the experimental facts as no evidence till date has been obtained so on the basis of experimental facts uh, the conclusions are have been drawn so the first point is that nuclei having closed cells have more number of stable isotopic or isotonic forms so closed cells means elements having neutrons or protons that is 2 8 20 50 82 or 126 they will have most stable isotopic forms for example tin with z is equal to 50 it has 10 stable isotopic form which is more than any other element then the binding energies of the atomic masses in atom with magic number nucleons the total are higher than their neighbors so as you have seen in case of oxygen and helium oxygen has magic number 8 and helium has magic number 2 so the binding energies are quite higher as compared to the other neighboring elements then if 
radio active element it disintegrates by alpha emission then it tends to attain a stable configuration which is associated with a magic number so when we are considering an alpha emission then or when alpha decay takes place then the daughter element form will have the magic number then the nuclei with the nucleons total just above the magic number are less stable than those with magic number so if we have any nuclei whose total number of nucleons are just above the magic number that is suppose say any nuclei is having nucleons 21 then it has one neutron or proton greater then such nuclei has a tendency to emit that particular extra neutron and it will attain a magic number that is suppose an element is having 21 neutrons then it has a tendency or it may be a neutron emitter and in the process of neutron emitting it will tend to attain the magic number then asymmetry of uranium fission the substructures or the daughter elements they are formed can be expressed in the form or in the existence of the magic numbers asymmetrical fission of uranium is taking place and the daughter elements that are formed will show the magic numbers then the as i told earlier the good example of closed nuclear shell is the extremely stable helium and oxygen so helium has magic number 2 and oxygen has magic number 8 so they are highly stable as you can as you have seen in the graph also means that their binding energies or the value of the nuclear binding energies quite higher as compared to the other elements then the next point is that if any element is having one neutron above the magic number that is here oxygen 17 so it has one neutron more so it it will have tendency to lose that particular neutron and it will come back or it will go back to the magic number or it will fall back to the magic number then elements of nuclei containing magic number of nucleons they have large number of stable isotopes so elements of nuclei containing magic numbers they will have large number of stable isotope as we have seen in the example of tin so it has magic number 50 so it has large number of stable isotopes and at the end the end product of all the four radioactive series they are associated with the magic number that is four radioactive series that is we have uranium thorium actinium and neptunium okay where neptunium is an artificial radioactive si series and all the elements are not available naturally but they are artificially made and hence uh, there is a small deviation that is the fourth shown that is bismuth okay it is the end product of the neptunium series and the, uh, it has 83 and the second last product is lead with the magic number 82 so there is a bit deviation but all the end products of all the four radioactive series they are also associated with the magic numbers that means they all whenever a radioactive decay takes place the end product always has a magic number so magic numbers are closely associated to the nuclear shells so this magic number it represents the close octet or close shells of the nucleus and as a result those nuclei having magic number are largely stable which is proved by the experiment so this was all about the nuclear shell model thank you very much please do like share and subscribe thank you very much thank you very much